Okay, now we all mod one more month. Then we start working on the in the class on the lab. So you guys are thank you. And you still not done also for the lab wall. Then you have to do two labs. One will be working on the left wall. The other one have to be working on the digital lab. Up to this point, we get the lab up to 11. So basically, you want to get a certificate depend on the lab you done. If you done on of the lab, either for electronic or digital, then we give a complete certificate to you. Okay. However, I still waiting for the CP to let me know how many lab hour they want me to do in the class. I already sent to them a request. However, they want to make a different. That means not as much as I asked for. I still cannot do anything until they have to tell me exactly how many hours for the lab in the class. But for the tech show, we can do uh, another way, try to get it done uh, faster. That means maybe you can get, just get into the, the class and take out everything you need to do the lab at home. Okay. Then we will be, we'll be verified on the Zoom. Like you build a circuitry, you test and they not working. Then you can get into the Zoom and we will be telling you how to troubleshoot it to make it work. Okay. However, only the student active in the program, then I tell you, like if you get the 11 lab, you done about seven up to now and okay. However, you get doing only one, two, three, lab only, forget it, you start over, okay? We don't want to waste the time. I don't care how many students able to do it. I said, you get the lab, bring it home, build it, run it. Verify in the Zoom for me. Something wrong. I help you to troubleshoot it, to fix it. This is the course asking more involved. You have to read, you have to study. Okay. We are get only one organ, one month, okay? Then I want on the lab software supposed to be done. Does that mean you'll be loaning out the control box and all of the hardware to us as well? Exactly. Okay. That's what I planning. That means you get a box that 
including everything. I see uh, the tune, the wire, okay? Everything for you to build. And also the system box, you can run. That can save a lot of time. First thing we can teach you how to build it. That's okay, that's not big deal. Anyone can build it. How to run the cat. Okay. Then you can do it all. Maybe one week for you. Okay. So depending on how many students, how many cat box available. Try to help you. But the big thing is if it's not working then you will be learned how to do it, how to fix it. That's the key point. So Mr. Pham, you're saying this is starting from next semester, is that right? Can you say again, what? When does this start where we September. can get September. September, okay. The thing is, this summer will be end of the end of August. Okay. Take about a few days, then we start from the fall. So you can see on my will be a lot of work. Try to prepare how many box, how many system will be running good and try to prepare everything, okay? Then try to schedule for your guy. Okay, you get any uh, question? I think that's good. I think it's definitely easier when you get to work hands on building the circuitry to understand the circuit itself. Exactly. However, the big thing is understanding. If you're not understanding, okay, then No way, you can do anything. Okay, now, first thing I over one more time, to get you guys pay attention on how to do it. This uh, take two, that only focus on the digital lab, okay? So you know how to do what to do, that makes your guy easy. Otherwise, you know, you can stick on that. And I said again, if you're not active in the program, then you have to start over, okay? And not let your guy doing the lab. The thing is you're not doing, you know, any software lab, how can you want to do the lab? This is not a similar. Okay, now I quickly go over again one more time and I will be modify this lab with a little more detail. Okay, but what I want to tell you. When you get the schematic here, even do not quite understand the whole thing, but basically you must understand for it, I see how they work it. You see that a data we sending from port A, it, but we're not using the serial. How come you get the serial in here? You want data, you write to port A. And buffer here, they go 
came to the last year, and you can read it back. That's a very simple. And the next thing you want to get the memory. And first thing you have to write data to the memory, object to the memory here first. Then you write the data to the memory here. Okay. The first one's address. The second one is data. Right. Then you can read the memory. To read the memory again, you must be apply a thread. And now you can read the data. How to write, how to read. We already telling you. Okay, now, first thing I want to talk to you here. In order to do that, let first thing you must get the function definition for this on up dot function. That means for the new program, you can copy from the old one, but you delete on up the thing you don't need it. You must be get the function prototype for each one here. If you don't know how to do what to do, you have to start over. So this is the fourth step. Can you tell me, can you do it or not? You just copy it, paste it into your function prototype. Okay, so any question up to this point? I don't want you guys to get lost. I already gave it to you on up the uh, function will do the job. Now, last time I'm not giving you more detail on the function. Okay, this is the function definition right here, function prototype. You see that on up the function we already get that for you. Okay. You just copy exactly what the function prototype. We want to put it in here. Okay. And then after you get a function prototype, then you go ahead and do a function definition for each one. So I will be you given to you more detail on each function definition. That's a, outside yeah. the main at the bottom of the program. Right, after the... And uh, I yeah. know I still have work to do, but again, this DLab was pretty much a combination of DLab 9 and DLab 10 with different elements of each one sort of mixed together. So this is all stuff that we have done before. Yeah. Yeah, the thing is that the, you have to get a function uh, definition for a prototype. And the difference between the function definition and the function prototype, the function uh, prototype has a semicolon at the end of the function. The definition does not, as you look at line 255. Exactly. Function definition will be telling what you need to do. Right. Like, you know, you have to write port B or port B or whatever, so for you to last. Hey, Mr. Pham, I wanted to say one other thing too, because I noticed when Mr. Your brother was running those programs. On all these um, schematics, when you have them, as Mr. Pham is saying, you need to look at the 
schematic and see what ICs you have. I, I noticed some people were trying to use serial, but there was no IC 74164. So since there was no IC 74164, there's no way you can write serial. Exactly. You have parallel data coming in. Yeah, right. Uh, so, so you, you, if you're, when, for this particular IC, no way should there be any serial. You see, that's the thing that I try to do, okay? I try to record it, this part. If you really want to do the job, and you can look back into the YouTube when I upload it, then you can get everything you need. That's a function for definition for you to laugh. That's what you need to do. Right. And then you go to a next one, function enable. Right. You see that? That's a function enable. That's the same as output enable. Exactly. I I know you shortened it up. Right. After the first one, you shortened exactly. it up. So if you enable our output enable. That's okay. And now, next one, void you five clock. This is here. P clock. And this is a U2, U6 lot. The thing is when you see on the YouTube, you can Stop it in this point and you try to see you missing something in order inside that you see that. Okay. And you use the negative pulse. Right. And now you get the you see enable. Okay. We get everything ready for you. Only thing that you don't want to do it. Okay. And you save them here. Sometime I need, sometime I don't. And that validate. That will be just repeating. Now on that one here. Write a threat to memory. That's what you need. Everything to get the job done, enough for, to write the threat to this memory. And then you can get point write data to the memory. Everything you need in order to write data to the memory. And then the function will be void write to memory. The thing is every time I give it out the new lab, my job will be build the circuitry. Write the code to test, make sure they have a no problem before I give it out to your lab. Guarantee the circuitry working. Okay, so this is a void drive to memory. That's what you need. And then you can get a void for read memory. Okay, that's the function definition I want you to do. And the red. Like, you know, that memory ADC data, that's just the one we already did before. That we just copy and paste into the program. Exactly. Except you don't see any changing on that. The thing is, before you get stuck with the ADDA converter, we will, we'll be using the memory cat in here. We're adding more 
in the circuitry. So this part of you still cannot get it done. How come you want to do a new, new part? Okay, to get you can get any question. I said we already close to the end for the summer. If you're not really active in the program, you're not doing any software lab. Then if you still want continuing in this program, you start over. I don't care what you already did, just a little, not much, forget it. Otherwise you can quit it. Okay, you get an any question. This is my program and guarantee that you already work it. You will start building your lab after the August. But you not prove for me you done for the software. Forget it. Any question? Okay, if you not, then I start with the one. We're talking about ADDA converter. Okay, let's see. We want the AD converter. Okay. Now. This is your computer here. Okay, that's the CPU. And basically the computer or your cell phone or what else, they need to connect to the outside. Outside means signal will be the analog signal. Okay, like I talking about your cell phone. So that would be like when your you're talking to your cell phone, the signal coming out will be um, what type of the signal? When you're talking to your cell phone, analog signal. Analog signal. Yes, I sir. Agree. But what is the name? Sound. Sound wave. Right? Yes, sir. That's a sound wave. So the sound wave, when they go into your cell phone, they have to go into the microphone. And microphone will be converting what? Into electrical signal. And, okay. and Analog they converting, you know, the sound wave into electrical wave. Okay, that will be analog signal. Okay, then this signal we will have to go into what they call an encoder, a the converter. That means they converting from your analog signal to the binary signal in order to go into the computer, CPU. In here, computer cannot understand anything but only binary, zero, one, one, zero, okay? After they process it, 
they send that out. However, when they send it out, they still binary. Okay, depending on how many bit, sixteen bit, thirty two bit, or sixty four bit. Okay, they coming out, and now they go to another divide. They call a decoder. That's what you need to a converter. Okay, that means binary converting back to the analog signal and go into outside. That means go into the speaker. You see that? The whole process. When you're talking to your friend, you get the sound wave. Go to a converter. They convert into the binary so the CPU can cross it. And after done, he sent out still a binary. And then they need another device, they call a DA converter, converting back to the analog signal, then go to the speaker. Mr. Pham, going, going back to what we were talking about, uh, I think it was two weeks ago, within your cell phone, this is all done within a microprocessor, which combines the AD converter with the computer, the, the CPU, the memory, and the, the DA converter? Yeah, that's what, they call, that's what they not call a CPU. They call a microcontroller. Yes, sir, thank you. Okay, microcontroller, that means including everything. Okay, everything we need to do the job. All this stuff right here is inside the microcontroller? Right, everything. It's the Swiss Army knife of chips. The thing is they don't have enough room if they try to separate it, like in the pot. Okay, Mr. Pham, so let me understand this. The analog input, the encoder, the, the CPU, the decoder, and then the analog output, all of that is inside the microcontroller. Exactly. Okay, <laughs> thank you. And before that existed, that's why cell phones were so much bigger than they are today, right? Right. So now they get a more new technology. They make it much, much better. Like inside, you understand, you still get a filter, right? The thing is the filter when we select the signal. Is it a picture or is it your voice or whatever? In order to display. Okay? So everything, they put everything inside. One IC. That's what they call a microcontroller. The computer you're using at home. That not microcontroller. That only CPU. But when you understand how the whole system works, you really understand what a microcontroller is really doing. Also, right. It just combines it all into one chip. Right. That 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 is the day when you start uh, making a lot of money, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. If. If you really understand the microcontroller, that means you're able to tell the controller do whatever you want. I believe you can make a lot of money. Hey, Mr. Pham, and, and at this stage in the game, that's why a microcontroller has got to be uh, programmed or burned to do certain things. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay. You can see on my left box system inside that one microcontroller. Yes, along with the 8255. Yeah. And that microcontroller, when we bought it, they empty. Okay? That means nothing inside. So we have to bought the equipment in order to burning. That controller do what we want to do. And let me piggyback on that, Mr. Pham. So once again, anytime you buy a brand new microcontroller, 
you better know what you want to do with it because it needs to be programmed or burned to do a certain thing. And without that program or burning, uh, it's basically useless. It, it won't do anything. Exactly. Okay, got you. Most of the microcontroller, they get them almost the same thing. Inside what they get, they can get the binary coming out. They can get the serial. That's what we're using for the USB. In, in the past, we're using the serial 232 connect in the back of the computer to connect into the box. However, later computer now, they don't have any more serial 332 in the back of the computer. So that's why we have to converting that to 32 serial to USB. I think your computer Pham. only using USB. Mr. Fan, when you're when you're programming a mic microcontroller, is that programming uh, the definition of what firmware is, or is that different? Now that you have to write the program to tell the controller do what you want to do. And that normally they are using C and C plus not either one. Okay. Then you have to burn that mean you put a firmware inside that microcontroller. Oh, yeah. so that is, that is the firmware. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. If you go to the college, you take the course, I mean, university, that, that they call embedded. That means deal with the microcontroller, okay? You have to get the microcontroller and you see how many things that controller can do. Then you can write the software to tell the controller do it. Then you have to burn it, to turn it to be a firm way. So basically the converting from C or C++ into the binary, okay? And that's, a, that's a permanent read only program. Right, you, can, you cannot turn it if you're not burning a new data. Yes, sir. The thing is even we cannot do it, but you have to get the knowledge to understand how system working. Okay. Yeah. So you should, know the, you should know the basic fundamentals, am I right? Right. If you get a basic fundamental of a definition, you still don't know what can you want to do, what can you do. So that's why I keep creep it over over the definition, what is the cycle, okay? That means everything, you must be understand from the basic. Then after you understand the basic, then you can move it on, okay? So in order to understand any new technology or whatever it is, you should know the basic fundamentals, am I right? Okay. The slide and the slide that I'm looking right now on the top, its date is 2010. It's the basic fundamental doesn't change with the technology change or doesn't new technologies. There, but basic fundamental, you should know it. Right. Am I right? And they have to go by the basic and they modify to get it better. You have to walk before you run. <laughs> That's correct. I agree. Okay. Hey, Mr. Pham, uh, on this, uh, what you have right here, um, analog um, input voltage can be produced by a transducer. So the transducer takes that uh, voice or whatever and converts it into electrical energy, which goes through the system. Exactly. I can tell you, 
you can go into by transducer. Okay. Play like very simple thing. You can see, you know, when they try to get the temperature, you go to buy the temperature transducer. So basically, that transducer get the output temperature converting into the voltage. And that the computer can monitor, can do it. Okay? Okay. That means that without the transducer, you cannot do anything. Like, you know, you get the light in the front of your house. Okay? If someone coming, the light turn it off. Because it, how, sen it senses motion. How they can be turned it off? The, the transducer senses motion. Exactly. You need to get a motion transducer. Okay? The thing is, when the person moving, the air will be moving. So that will be turn on the light. And now, if you're not moving for a few seconds, can they turn it off? How come they can turn it off? The reason is they get the capacity. When you turn the, on the light, capacitor will be charging. Okay? And when the time you're not moving, Capacitor will be discharged. That turn off the light. And if you're doing in your house, you can say you can set how long you want to it to be on. That you set a time constant. Two seconds, five seconds. Okay. So you see that uh, basically apply for the real world. Okay, now, analog input voltage could be produced by transducer or sensor, either one, same name, converting one energy to the other. Transducer is defined as defined, that converting one form of energy to another. For instance, a photo cell could be used as an input transducer to give a, a voltage proportional to the light intensity. Light energy is being converted into electrical energy by the photo cell. Another transducer may include microphone, speaker, temperature, or so on. Any question on this page? Hopefully they can make it clear for the guy. Now, the converter. This is a binary, and they will be a four-bit counter, like 74191, 74193. That's a four-bit binary counter. They're counting from zero to 15, okay? And basically, they just give you the picture, you apply the clock, one clock, they count one number. Okay, and they get only four bit binary out. Now, this is a radical DA converter. 
four, but so if you get a zero, 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 what is the output? And zero, 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 one, what is the next, what is the output? Okay, so that's why they gave it to you, how they working. First thing you get on zero, output major here, zero. And you go zero, 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 one, output, go to one volt, and so on. They keep going. Maximum when you get a one, 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 one. You go up to the maximum 15 volt. That's what they call a full scale. Okay. And now how come they repeat again? The thing I did in the counter, they count zero to 15, zero to 15, counting forever. If so you the, still apply the clock. So the output voltage always matches the input binary. Exactly. Value. Depend on binary. Okay. They given you the output. Okay, now, if you're looking on that one, few things you need to recognize. First thing, when they go to the top, maximum, that's what they call a full scale. Okay, and now, step, step number. How many steps from here up to here? Like a ladder. 16. 15. 15. Okay. 15. 15. Right. The thing that you can see right here, that's a one step. One, two, three, four, five, you count up to here. They will be 15. Okay. And they said resolution, one volt. What that mean? That mean every time you change the binary, Output will be 10, one, one volt. And this counter works the same as the ones we've used before where at, at 15, you'll have a pulse that borrow out and it will return you back to zero to start again. Right. That means just a normal counter. Go up 0, 15. 0, 15, 0, 15. Go up forever. If you quit apply the clock. Mr. Fem, the resolution in this case is one volt. It can have less than one volt also, am I right? Exactly. For me, the converter. The resolution is one volt. Mr. Fem. Yeah. So one question. So that, that resolution basically depends on the number of bits of resolution that the analog converter is using right yeah but depend on the da converter they tell you okay okay when you bought it they carry you what resolution got it okay however for the da converter if you want the output to be 0 0.5 volt can we do it yeah we can do it but resolution we have to change the, the resolution would be extremely yeah. small then, right? Yeah. If you want 0 0.5 volt at the output, no way you can use this DA converter. I think yeah. each time, each time they change, they change one volt. So each one is preset to its resolution. You yeah. need a, you, you need a you different cannot, you cannot do it. You have to buy a new one. With a 0 0.5 I result. got it. Yeah, with a different resolution. Okay? So, so the, the, same IC, the same IC, we cannot change the resolution, am I right? No, we okay. have to buy right. another IC. You bought it, they already say one phone. You want to get no way. Throw it away, get another one. Okay, got it. Any question? Yeah, just real quick, Mr. Fam, just with knowledge. What? Well, so if you for zero point five one, how 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 would you go about ordering that, or 
how does that work as far as the step size goes? No, no. When you buy the DA converter, you have to talk uh, looking into the specification on that part. Yeah, right. And they telling you what resolution. I guess let me ask you this: What what is the smallest resolution uh, oh, you have? They will be very very small. Oh, okay. So the and basic, Mr. Smith, what you can do is you divide five by fifteen, and that will be give you resolution. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, okay. But resolution goes into the millivolts or microvolts? Yeah. Microvolt and more. Okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. So that's why you know the cell phone get get a more price for the new one. Okay. But it's just, it's just that's why you pay so much for the iPhone eleven. Five volts. <laughs> now after the one, we'll be working on the lab. DA converter zero eight. Eight bit. Okay. And they given you a general picture. On that one, you get our eight bit data binary. A1, A8. Okay. When they go into DA converter. They converting not to voltage, but the converting to the current. Okay, they will be a DA converter, but current converter. You apply binary. They sending out with the current, not the voltage. For this DAC zero eight. Okay. DAC08, that's what you're working in the lab. Okay? And we don't care what in here. Okay? We care how they working. Now, they given you another example. Okay, for this D to a converter, how many bit? Eight bit. Four bit. Four bit. Okay. What is the full scale? Ten volt. Nine point three seven. Negative nine point three seven five. And so this is not a negative, am I right? Yeah. Our step size is 0 0.625 volts. 0 0.625 volts. Right. That's a perfect. You get everything. When you look into the data of the air converter, that's what you need to understand. Okay? Mr. Fem, is this a negative sign or just you wrote negative zero no, point? Absolute value. We don't care. Okay. okay, got it. Okay, the solution. The solution of the air converter. Converter is defined at a smaller than that can occur in the analog output at the result of the chain in the digital input. That means in digital input, they can have one bit and whatever output analog chain, that will be a step size and the solution. So result percentage of resolution equal the step size Okay, full scale time a hundred percent. Reciprocal of the number of a discrete steps in the uh, output. For instance, for but the uh, converter had fifteen discrete step number of the step size. 
the resolution will be one over divide two to the power of four minus one. Where where four is the number of bit is mm -hmm. the number of bits. Yeah. Time a hundred percent. You get for four bit, you get only six point sixty seven percent resolution. General formula. Resolution equal one over two power of n. n is the number of bit minus one. Okay, where n is the number of bit and the total number of step, they must be equal to power of n minus one. That's what we already learned. Four bit. Okay, how many steps? You take two power four, 50. fifteen minus one, you get fifty. And in this case, two to the power of n relates again to the number of locations. No number, of, but right. So that was so that was uh, like a uh, uh, sixteen minus one, which is fifteen, and that that gives you the, the number of steps. Yeah. But then if you take the uh, reciprocal of that, that's where you get the resolution. Exactly. Okay. That one we don't care example here. That you all. That's a very thing we don't want it. Now, that one, we try to get this one. Okay? Then we can stop it. A 10 bit DA converter has a step size of 10 millivolts. They want to know the full scale output voltage and the percentage of resolution. What we are supposed to be equal, maximum. What the resolution? Okay, we don't have any thing. We try to see. Two to the uh, Mr. Ten. Ma'am, two to the ten is a uh, is a thousand twenty four, which would be one k. Yeah, two to the ten is a thousand twenty four. Okay, now if you want to know the full scale, okay. And they get the step size is 10 millivolt. So if you want the full scale, okay, full scale equal step size, right? Right. Step time. Time what? Time the number of bits. Time. How many voltage? Oh, how, yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Per step. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, for this example, so full scale equal how many steps? Thousand twenty-four. Well, what, that that formula said that formula said two to the n minus one. So two to the two to the ten is a thousand twenty-four, and then minus one is ten twenty-three. That is on one thousand twenty-three step. Correct. Correct. Um, how many volts per step? Ten million. Ten millivolt. So you get ten point two three. Equal ten point twenty three. Volt. Full scale. Okay. Say that easy, right? Yes, it sir. Should be, it should be millivolt, small m, not capital M. It's mega. Yeah, exactly.
okay? And now they say, day one, the percent of resolution. So you take the reciprocal, right? I don't know, percent of resolution. Equal. Okay, so we go to get the formula. Percent of resolution. One over two pop n minus one times hundred. Okay. Equal one over, right? Right. Okay, two power. Ten. Okay, let's see. Uh, Ten. Yeah, yeah, I know. Power of N. N, right? Right, N. N and 10, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Power minus eight. one. Is it minus one? Minus yeah, eight. minus one. Okay. And that will be time, time hundred percent, right? Yeah. So what do you think is supposed to be equal? You need to calculate it. If I did it correctly, I have zero point zero zero one nine five. Zero point. Zero, zero. One, nine, five. One, nine, five. Did you already time a hundred? That is times a hundred percent. And I, I may have done my calculation wrong. Okay. Hey, cool. hey Mr. Pham, I have zero point zero nine seven seven five. Okay, let's see. Uh, I have 0 0.09775. Okay, so 2 power of 10 is 1024 minus 1023. Right, and then you take the reciprocal. Okay, 1023. Take the reciprocal times okay. 100. You get 9.775. No, 0 0.09775. 0 0.00975 I'll, after yeah. multiplication with 100. Yeah, you get a zero point uh, in my year. Okay. I can tell you. Okay. 100. Now, I get number here will be 929. Uh, seven seven five times ten to the power of minus four. Okay. So four minus four, that means you take nine point seven seven five divide ten thousand. Correct? I think so it should be 10 to the power negative 3 because the final answer is 0 0.09775 so if you shift the point then it is I think so isn't it 0 0.009775 yeah they will be 9.775 right yeah. if you if you take the reciprocal 9. Point. Seven seven five. If you take the reciprocal one twenty three of a ten twenty three, you get zero point zero zero zero. That's three zeros. Then nine seven seven five. And then when you multiply by hundred, it's zero point zero nine seven seven five. Correct. Correct. So how can you write 9.775 times 10 to the negative 4? I believe it should be 10 to the negative 3, not negative 4. 
Right. If 9.775 is correct, then it should be to the negative third. I agree with that. So that means I'm doing wrong. Okay, let's see. So one, it, it, but if it should be 10 to the negative fourth, then it will be 0 0.9775. Okay, now, if you take a one divide, to two power 1023, you get 9.775 times 10 to the minus four. If we're using minus four, then it should be 0 0.977. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not talking about by 100 yet. Oh. Don't go any 100 right here. OK, Mr. Pham, for, for, for the reciprocal of 10, 23, the answer is 0 0.000. That's three zeros, then 9775. So write this down. Write down zero, zero. How come? I, no, Mr. Pham, uh, no, no. Mr. Pham, just listen to me. Just write down zero, <laughs> zero. Write down zero. <laughs> you said zero. Write zero, point, point. Now write three zeros. One, two, three. And now write nine, seven, seven, five. Okay, that's what the reciprocal of 1023 is. Now, now. Uh, times 100. Yeah, yeah, times 100. Now put that times 100. What do you get? Okay. 0 0.09775. 0 0.09775. 0 .0 yes. No, 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 you only got one nine. Make that a seven. Seven? Seven, five. No, 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 you put nine back. Seven, seven, five. That's, That's correct. One over 10.23. Yeah. That's how we calculate the resolution and also the full scale. So that's your step size there. Yeah. That's your resolution, yeah. Right. Okay, so we will be continuing next time. Okay, you get any problem with the D lab, you just try to take to me, I can online to help you judge. Don't Thank do you, anything. Mr. If you not quite know how to do what to do, you have to try to make it clear. Okay. Hey, Mr. Pam, I just got one baby question before we leave. Because I'm, maybe I'm getting something mixed up here. The resolution, the, the percent of resolution and the step size is different, correct? Completely different. Right. They're different. Percent of resolution is where you take the reciprocal. But if we don't take the reciprocal, then it's the step, step size. No. Without the 100%. No. Step time do nothing good though. For sample. Right, 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 right. Because this this 0 0.09775 is the percent of resolution. That's a resolution. Right, got it. Got it. More small, much better. See what happens when we work as a team to work the calculator. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. We confuse ourselves at first, but we get to the right answer eventually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dale, we'll see you next time. Okay, Mr. Thank Pham. You, Thank you, Mr. Pham. Bye. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. <laughs>